Why did towards the end of his life, Darth Vader decide to abandon his castle on Mustafar and move to his Star Destroyer, the terrifying machine known as the Executor, choosing to live there full time? And how exactly was this representative of Vader's growing and changing power in the Force? Greetings, and welcome back to the Archives. Lord Vader owned many homes within the Empire in Legends and Canon. Vader owned a retreat on Coruscant, his castle on Vajun, and most famously, he had his terrifying fortress on Mustafar. In canon continuity, it would be Fortress Vader on Mustafar, where the Dark Lord would spend the majority of his years. But that would all change in 0 BBY when the Death Star was destroyed, and the hunt for the Rebels was kicked into high gear. For almost the entire remainder of the Galactic Civil War up until his death, Vader would move into the Executor and set home base there even going so far as to install a personal back to tank and a meditation chamber. As far as we know, Vader would sparsely ever return to Mustafar following this. And in today's Holocron, we are going to explore a theory on Vader's subconscious thoughts and feeling towards his Super Star Destroyer following the Battle of Yavin. Not only this, but why living on the Executor actually made Vader more powerful, and why putting Mustafar behind him may have been a brilliant move. Before we begin though, we are having a huge sale on the Star Wars merch page, where site-wide is half off thanks to the holidays. So if you want something for yourself or a gift for someone else, now is an excellent time to do so. Not to mention, for orders over $50, it is free worldwide shipping. So be sure to check the link in the description down below. But now my friends, onto the Executor, Fortress Vader, and the altering psyche of the Dark Lord. To begin, we have to discuss exactly what Mustafar meant to Vader. The choice to build his home on the site of his greatest weakness and failure has always been perplexing. But it wasn't just that he set up shop on the world, but he specifically chose a place where his castle was on a cliff, overlooking the beach where he was burned. It's honestly a bit shocking that Vader would continue to force himself to reflect back on Anakin's mistakes and failures, even though he is trying to forget that part of himself to kill what remained of Skywalker. However, Vader had chosen to do this as a form of not only self-punishment, but as self-reminder. He constantly wanted to remember his defeat as a way to drive him deeper into hatred and resentment for that weaker part of himself. This was a reminder to never repeat the same weakness. Yet, this didn't exactly have the intended effect that Vader was hoping for. Rather than learning from his mistakes, he was swallowed up in grief and tormented with the ghost of Anakin Skywalker. Mustafar truly represented all of Vader's failures because on that day, he lost not only his family, but his entire way of life, his freedom, his dignity, and worse, his potential in the Force. The Emperor constantly was pushing Vader to forget his past, forget Anakin, and to forget Padme, and even to forget Kenobi. His tight-fisted clinch on his past stunted his growth as a Sith Lord, all of which was exacerbated by the insistence on reminding himself of that day on the Black Sand Beach. Mustafar was a place of dead things. From the moment Anakin arrived on that world, death followed him. He brought it first to the Separatists, then to his wife, and then finally to himself. For two decades, Vader would live on Mustafar, allowing himself to retreat deeper into the darkness. However, this darkness we speak of wasn't the dark side as Sidious would have wanted, but instead, it was a darkness that made up of pure depression and anxiety of regret. Vader became cold and calloused, uncaring to most things unless it involved the Emperor directly. Vader became more machine than man, as Obi-Wan put it. But then, this would all change after the destruction of the Death Star. It's true Vader himself was never really impressed with the Death Star, agreeing more with Thrawn that it was a waste of resources. However, he could not deny the power of the completed station. It truly seemed indomitable, until one rebel destroyed it all. During the battle, he had felt the boy's connection to the Force from several starfighters away, and later in the comics, Darth Vader would hire Boba Fett to track down and capture this mysterious Luke. Although the bounty hunter was unsuccessful, he would bring back Vader a piece of information more valuable than anything. The name, the name Skywalker. Overnight, Vader's fascination turned into pure obsession. He had a son, and Mustafar was a lie. His failure had not been complete. He had a family, a reason to keep going other than the Empire, and it was as if life had been breathed straight into Vader's respirator, and Vader woke up. There would be no rest for the Dark Lord following this, and the search for Luke. And titularly, this would be when Vader would acquire the Executor from Grand General Tag, and the Dark Lord would move in officially, 
determined to pursue Luke with the vested interest that he had not felt since the beginning of his turn as a Dark Lord. It was at this point that the Executor took on a new meaning for Vader. It wasn't just a super star destroyer, one of arguably the most powerful ships in galactic history, nor was it about the Executor's sheer size and intimidation factor. The ship represented Vader's new mission to find and reclaim his family perhaps to become the Emperor. He finally had a worthy opponent, and there could be no time to return to Mustafar to rest or dwell on the past. He would need to move, because Luke would never stop moving. The rebels were mobile and on the run constantly, so if Vader were to ever find his son, he would stay on the move as well. The Executor represented the reinvigoration of Vader, but let us be clear, the light had not returned. Vader purely wanted to capture Luke and seduce him to the dark side, so that the two of them could overthrow the Emperor and rule the galaxy. Vader was steeped in the dark side, but he had finally found the most important ingredient to being a Sith. Unlike what Vader initially believed, and what Sidious constantly preached, it wasn't pain that made a Sith, nor was it fear, or even hatred. The real fuel for the dark side, and the true ingredient to being a good Sith, was passion. To recite the Sith Code which has existed for thousands of years. Peace is a lie. There is only passion. Through passion I gain strength. Through strength I gain power. Through power I gain victory. Through victory my chains are broken. The Force shall free me. The Sith Code shows that passion leads directly to victory, something that Vader sorely needs after all of his failure. The Executor, unlike Mustafar, became the conduit for his passion, the bringer of his victory. The code finally rang true for the Dark Lord Vader, the second he found Luke. The moment he moved on to the Executor, we notice how drastically Vader's power actually increases. His power is tied directly to his passion. This is why Vader grew exponentially in power between the events of A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. My friends, by making his home the Executor, Vader gained newfound strength and vitality. This shows us how he is portrayed in the current Vader comic series as well. In the comics, he is at the most powerful that we've ever seen him in canon. He conquers technology that shuts down his suit remotely, resists a super weapon that literally drains the life out of every organic life form in the vicinity, chokes someone on the surface of a planet, and nearly pull a ship back down to the ground while it is activating its sublight thrusters. Most of these things listed just now were feats accomplished within two to three issues of each other, which only scratches the surface of some of Vader's strongest feats in the Force around this era. Debatably, this is the most powerful version of Vader that we have ever seen. The fact that he has decided to abandon Mustafar, to abandon the failures of Anakin, and embrace a path where he can grow to be the Emperor, to have a son, to have a family, to move from Mustafar to the Executor, is Vader's ultimate embrace of the Sith way in the embrace of power. Fortress Vader is the home of Anakin Skywalker's greatest failures, but the Executor and Luke is a portrait of what could be in the name of power. But anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this? Do you believe that Vader's decision to abandon Mustafar was a wise one? What do you think of Vader's relationship from Mustafar to the Executor and his decision to move? Thank you as always so much for visiting the channel today, my friends. Don't forget the sale on the Star Wars merch page for the holidays, and have a great day.